dead. Um, uh, you know, that he'd killed somebody and, and, and he was holding a head in his hand. They say that there used to be a dog. He was holding a dog in that hand on a leash. Some experts believe the giant portrays Nodens, a Celtic hunting god. This Celtic statue found near CERN shows him like the giant with a club in one hand. In the other, he carries a rabbit or hare. Hercules is another possibility. The Romans worshipped him in the second century. Statuettes like this one, found in Bristol, show him with a club in his right hand and draped over his other arm, a lion skin. We used a new technique, a resistivity survey, to establish whether the ground around the giant had ever been disturbed. This might show whether part of the drawing is now missing. Britain's top resistivity surveyor is Dr. Anthony Clark. We've taken uh, over 5,000 readings on a regular grid uh, at half meter spacing. And what we're going to do when we go away from here is to turn those readings into some sort of visual map uh, which will show the outline of anything which is buried under the grass. And we shall probably use a, a computer to produce that map. It proves to be an historic experiment. On the computer map, an unsuspected area of disturbed soil appears beneath the giant's left arm. This refined dot density of yours uh, ties in very well with this overlay of the plan of the giant, Alistair, remarkably well. Um, and we can see the feature just about as clearly as I think we shall ever see it here. There can now be little doubt about the rude man of Sir. The resistivity survey has established that there was once a curiously shaped outline now missing beneath the giant's empty arm. On the giant himself, the man in charge, archaeologist David Thackeray, uses the survey results to restore the complete outline for a few hours with a pail of whitewash. The result is stunningly convincing. suddenly lost for words. Yes. The CERN giant with his new trappings is the image of Hercules with his lion skin. His resemblance to the Roman statuette is unmistakable to David Thackeray. He has so many of the features which Hercules has on portrayals of the period, of the Roman period. He has the club, the great virility, the superhuman size, and now the lion skin just adds great weight to, to the argument that he is Hercules. He may well have been the symbol of a religious cult which he has long outlasted. But the origin of much more recent figures is just as obscure. Is this, as some say, King George III riding the Osmington Charger? And although the Littlington horse in Sussex was cut as recently as 1925, the artist's name is lost. The strangest of Britain's white horses dominates the Berkshire Downs at Uffington. It's also by far the oldest. In the 12th century, it was mentioned in a book of wonders. Leading archaeologist Professor Stuart Piggott has pondered the origins of the Uffington horse since his childhood in Whitehorse Vale. A pointer to its date lies in the coin room at Oxford's Ashmolea Museum. Looking back into the prehistoric past, at least the late prehistoric past, the best comparable uh, representations of horses are to be found on early British coins, first century BC, pre-Roman, 
which do show horses on one side of them, and these horses do seem, to most of us, to be very comparable to the way in which the white horse on the hill is shown. Now, they all share the same uh, characteristics. A horse as a, a wheel, which is the remains of the original prototype, classical prototype of a chariot, uh, and the horse, shown in anything but a classical manner. It's shown as elongated and disjointed, uh, just as with the white horse, the legs have become detached from the body, they become bananas and dumbbells, uh, and the uh, long neck, and the curious treatment of the head, in which the head is a sort of beak-shaped uh, object, rather than anything like a naturalistic horse. And I and many others would say that these provide the best stylistic parallels to the white horse, and therefore there's a reasonable supposition that the horse on the hill dates from the same, more or less the same period as the horse on the coins, first century BC. But Britain once also had a red horse, cut by the Saxons. And the men in this plane think they've rediscovered it. 